Although I've spent much of the morning preparing a lot of food, today's episode is not going to be one of my actual cooking shows. Instead, I want to share with you the natural method that I use to get rid of my persistent heartburn forever. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. I used to suffer horribly with heartburn, acid reflux, or gastroesophageal reflux disease. For 12 years, from 1991 through 2008, it seems like it would get no relief, especially towards the end when it was just getting worse. At first, I did all the over-the-counter drugs that the doctors advised me to take, and then eventually I graduated to the prescription stuff, you know, like all those purple pills. And I also avoided the offending foods, the so-called offending foods, but to no it avail. It finally got to a point where my symptoms were so bad that I decided that it would be beneficial for me to go research exactly what GERD or heartburn or acid reflux was, what caused it, and how I could get rid of it. So exactly what is heartburn? Not what causes it, but what is it? It's the process by which the food and the acid that's in your stomach gets backed up into the esophagus. Now let me try to describe really briefly exactly how our digestive system works. It works on four tracks, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine, which is the colon. Now these four tracks are separated by muscles called sphincters. The sphincter that separates the esophagus from the stomach is known as the LES, or the lower esophageal sphincter. Now normally when the sphincter is operating correctly, it stays tightly shut. That is, until we swallow. So let me tell you how it works. We chew the food, we f swallow it through the food tube or the esophagus, and then when it gets to the sphincter, it opens up and it squeezes through a peristaltic type motion that squeezes the food into the stomach. So as you can see, the esophagus or the LES does not chew the food. We have to literally chew the food. Once it gets past our teeth, there's nothing that the food tube and the LES can do before it gets into the stomach to get it digested. So the next important question is, exactly why does heartburn occur? Now I know that there's a lot of answers to this question, but the one that I subscribe to is the fact that we damage somehow our esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter, and then they cease functioning properly. For those of you suffering with heartburn, have you ever noticed that sometimes the food burns while it's going down rather than 20 minutes after you've eaten? Let me show you why. So on this side of my counter, I have some of the foods that we eat on a normal basis. Now I'm not saying that these foods are bad for you, but I'm just describing what, how I believe our esophagus and the sphincter got damaged. Look at this. These are almonds. They're very hard. If you don't chew them properly, they will go down into the esophagus and cause scars and cuts and fissures and open wounds. Look at this cereal. I want to show you a, a test. Now this is the dry cereal without the milk. Now remember that our esophagus and the stomach does not chew the food. So if we chew this partially and we swallow it, then of course it's gonna go down in shards and it's gonna damage our esophagus. So take a look at this. Let's say I didn't chew it, right? That's the squeezing motion that the um, sphincter uses to push the food into the stomach. So see, let me open my hand and show you. You see all those shards? Let's say this was just partially chewed. Then there's nothing the sphincter can do but squeeze it and then that's what happens. It doesn't go down smoothly. Now let's take like the popcorn for example. The same thing, see? If I chewed it partially and then the sphincter squeezes it to pushes it through to the stomach, then of course you're gonna get these big chunks. The same thing with these crackers, especially the good, the multigrain and the whole grain ones that we're supposed to eat, see? See? And you know you've chewed it a little bit, right? But I'm just saying if you had these shards and you, this is all the sphincter can do, then what else is going to happen but these pieces right here are going to go and it's going to cut inside your food tube because the lining of the, the food tube is very tender and sensitive, kind of like the lining in your mouth. And of course, look at bacon. Can you imagine how much trouble we would have if we didn't chew this correctly? And this, I'm not even going to try squeezing this because I'm probably going to get a cut in my hand. So these are the type of foods, to me, that causes damage initially. So now let's move on to what happens after the damage occurs. 
Now, a lot of people will tell you to use apple cider vinegar to fix the digestive problems, right? Well, imagine if this were my esophagus right here, this skin. Imagine I had a cut because one of these harsh, crunchy foods cut me. Imagine if I poured this vinegar on top of that cut. Don't you think it would burn? So now that we know what causes the damage, let's move on to how we can fix the problem. So here I've prepared a bunch of foods that we can actually eat while we're going through the healing process, okay? So these, this is just bland soup, and I did it with potatoes and some cabbage, and you could put noodles, but make sure it's not spicy. Here I've got some tuna that I just made with mayo. This is some pasta with broccoli and chicken, and it's not spicy. Plain old white bread, raisins, vanilla ice cream, not chocolate because of the acid from the chocolate, okay? And I've got a batch of broccoli and cauliflower and carrots. Of course, you want that to be steamed so it could be soft. And over here on this platter, we have good old avocado, cucumbers, celery. Now, the celery is kind of hard, so you're going to have to chew this really well. And the cabbage, I would suggest that you steam it. And I have one more thing. Let me see if I can move all this out the way really, really quickly. Oh, I forgot to show you. We have apple, which is really good for your digestion. It's even good if you have asthma. And we have banana. So those are some, those are called low acidic foods, okay? Those are low acidic foods. Now let me show you this one. I kept this off to the side because a lot of people, even though this is a low acidic fruit, a lot of people do experience a lot of problems when they're having heartburn or GERD when eating watermelon. So you're going to have to test it to see if you are one of those, okay? I know when I was going through my problem, I did have trouble with watermelon. Now remember at the start of this video, I promised you that I was going to share with you the natural food that I use to get rid of my heartburn. So here it is, really raw honey. This is my little miracle in a jar. So let me show you what our honey looks like. See, it still has the hive in it. Let me see what the jar says. It says contains the pollen and the honeycomb. So this is actually unpasteurized honey and this is the one we need in order to heal our esophagus and our LES. So let's recap really quickly. When we don't chew our food well, and it goes down in big chunks and shards, we damage our esophagus, and so we have open wounds that needs to be healed. Likewise, when it passes through the LES, that becomes damaged because the food is not masticated properly. And so when that becomes damaged, it stays in a partially open position, and so that allows the acid from your stomach to splash back up into your esophagus. So what we want to do is fix the problem. And let me share with you how I fixed my problem back in 2003 by taking three simple steps. The first step was I started to take time to eat my food and I chewed it properly. The second step, I bought the really raw honey and took one teaspoon in the morning and one teaspoon at night for five days. During those five days, I made sure that I ate only bland, non-spicy, non-acidic, non-crunchy type foods, like the stuff that I showed you on this side of the counter. I avoided the stuff that was on this side of the counter, the crunchy, spicy, acidic type foods, but only for five days. After the five days, I was well. I healed completely, and I was able to digest all my foods from that point to now. This is 2012, so from 2003 to 2012, I have not been on any medications for heartburn or acid reflux disease, and I've been able to digest all my foods. Now I know that you, my viewers, are picking up my book and I'm really grateful for it. And so I put this little bit of information on page 103 in my book. But I decided it was time to make this video because I've noticed that a lot of people around me lately have been complaining about heartburn and acid reflux disease. And so I decided I wanted to do my little part in sharing the little bit of knowledge that I have. Now let me give you my disclaimer. I am not a doctor, I am not a nurse, I am not in the medical field. If you're going to try anything new, you may want to consult with your doctor first, especially for people who are diabetics. Perhaps you are not able to process honey the way regular people who are not diabetics can process honey. So perhaps you will have to change the honey to aloe vera. Again, please consult your physician because I am not a doctor. I thank you so much for watching, watching the show. I hope this blesses you. And until I see you guys again, take care.